you suspect a dog is unconscious, approach with extreme caution, um, particularly if it's not your dog. Any injured dog is far more likely to, to bite you, so they may not be unconscious, so just be careful. Approach them from behind. Ideally, touch them with, the, with your foot first. Um, if not, there's no response when you do that. Then touch them with the back of your hand. It's far less intrusive than the front of your hand. Keep looking for any sorts of response at all. If there's no response, then you need to check their airway. You are only going to be looking after or approaching a dog that is your dog or a dog that you have permission to help. So if it's, if it's not your animal, please do not be doing CPR or anything intrusive um, or first aid related on them without the permission of the owner. Okay, so if this is your animal or you have permission to help, you would then have a look and see if there is anything obvious that has um, caused a problem. So this dog is unconscious. You would never do this on a dog that is conscious without extreme caution. So you would carefully open up the mouth and ease the tongue forward. So pull the tongue forward because the tongue, when they're unconscious, will roll back on itself. And have a look and see if there is anything obvious that is causing an obstruction and has led to them being unconscious. Okay, and if there is, you can just carefully remove that. Okay, so they are unconscious and you need to see if they are breathing. If they're unconscious and breathing, you're going to put them in the recovery position, as we've showed you on a previous um, video, where you will extend their airway and get them to, for veterinary help fast. If they are unconscious, they are not breathing, so when you check to see if they're breathing, you can't see their chest move, um, you would then check for a pulse. And the easiest place to find the pulse is in the femoral artery here on the back leg, and you would feel it with your fingers here, just apply gentle pressure. If there is a pulse, then what you would be doing is ease the tongue back, you would squeeze their jaw together like this, and you would breathe into their nose. When you breathe into their nose, you will see the chest rise. So you would breathe into them. Four or five breaths, okay? If there was no pulse, you would still do those breaths, and then you would start with compressions. So the compressions for most dogs are in the side of the chest here, heel of your hand, up over the top, and you're going to give 30 compressions. You're gonna be pushing down hard, okay? So I will be giving 30 compressions like that, followed by two more breaths. 30 compressions, two breaths. It's possible that you might damage the ribs while you're doing this because you're having to push very hard in order to squeeze the heart. For a greyhound type chest, a keel type chest, you would be slightly further forward. And for a boxer or a barrel type chest, it's been advised that if you can put the dog onto their back and push in the centre of the chest like you would for a human, that you may well get um, a better result. However, it's very difficult to keep a boxer on their back, so you might well find that it's easier for you to be doing the compressions in the same way as this.